Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about the parallel operation of alternators. So basically, interconnection of electrical power system is essential from the point of, uh, from the economical point of view as well as reliability. And these interconnection of AC power systems requires your synchronous generators to be operated in parallel and normally in generating stations we can witness two or more generators are connected in parallel and the alternators which are located at different locations are connected to form a grid connected system. So let us see what are the reasons for uh, operation of these alternators in parallel. So there are quite several reasons for the operation of alternators in parallel. So the one reason you can say, so let us discuss the reasons for operating the alternators in parallel. So one reason you can say, the several alternators can be connected in parallel so that they can supply a bigger load than a single alternator. So several alternators can be connected in parallel to supply a bigger load than a single alternator and the second reason is many alternators can be connected in parallel or you can say many new alternators can be connected in parallel with minimal disturbance of initial installation according to the requirement to fulfill the future increasing of the demand. So with minimal disturbance of initial installation we can connect many number of machines in parallel and the third reason is one or more alternators can be shut down during the period of light loads so during the period of light loads there is no requirement of many alternators connected in parallel so we, we may shut down one or more alternators during the period of light loads such that the remaining alternators can be operated at near or full load. They can be operated near or full load such that the efficiency of the system increases. So the fourth reason is when one of the alternators is taken out for service for its scheduled or scheduled maintenance and uh, inspection then the remaining alternators will be there to maintain the continuity of supply so in order to maintain the continuity of supply when one or more uh, when one of the alternators is taken out for a service for scheduled maintenance and inspection there will be no interruption in the or you can say there will the continuity of the power supply is maintained with the remaining alternators and the fifth thing is if one of the alternators is or you can say if there is a breakdown of one of the alternators the interruption is stopped or you can say there will be no interruption in the power supply though one of the alternator got breakdown and the sixth thing is the parallel operation of alternators reduces the operating cost as well as generating cost so it will reduce the operating cost as well as generating cost and the seventh thing is this operation of alternators in parallel will ensure greater security of supply it will ensure greater security of supply as well as overall economic generation so economical generation will take place when the alternators are operated in parallel so because of these several reasons we are going for the parallel operation of alternators and now let us discuss the requirements of alternators to be operated in parallel so the requirements the requirements for the alternators to be operated in parallel in order to so the alternators to be operated in parallel should meet some requirements so as to ensure their proper operation for the proper operation there are some requirements to be met by the alternators to be operated in parallel so the first requirement is the alternators which are operating in parallel must have the same output voltage rating same output voltage rating and the second thing is the rated speeds of the machine should be such that they should have the 
same frequency so they should have the same frequency where f is equal to np by 120 now once the speed of machine will be same and the poles will be fixed therefore you will be having the same frequency now the third thing is the alternator should be of same type so as to generate the voltage of same form voltage of same waveform must be generated from the two same type alternators and uh, they may differ in their kva ratings so the kva ratings may be different but the generated voltage should be of same waveform and the fourth thing is the prime mover of the two alternators should have the same speed load characteristics they should have the same speed load characteristics which of course is a drooping characteristics and uh, this is required so as to load the generators in proportion to their output ratings so in order to load the generators in proportion to their output ratings the speed load characteristics of the prime mover of the two alternators must be seen and the fifth thing is the alternators which are going to be operated in parallel should have the reactances in their armature otherwise there won't be the successful operation of the alternators in parallel so basically these are the requirements and these are the reasons to be known before understanding the parallel operation of alternators so now let us discuss the conditions of synchronization so let us discuss now the conditions of synchronization so first let us understand what is this synchronization so synchronization is nothing but the process of connecting two alternators or you can say one alternator and one infinite bus bar system in parallel and that process is nothing but the synchronizing process synchronizing is just the process of connecting two alternators or one alternator and one infinite bus bar system in parallel is referred as the synchronization and uh, let us see the two other terms one is the incoming machine one is the incoming machine and uh, other one is the running machine so running machine is that machine which is carrying the load which is carrying the load is nothing but your running machine whereas the incoming machine is nothing but the alternator which we are going to connect in parallel with the running machine so the conditions of synchronization is the first condition is the phase sequence of the incoming machine voltage that is the phase sequence the phase sequence of the incoming machine voltage incoming machine voltage should be same as that the phase sequence of the running machine voltage so this is the first condition and the second condition is the rms line voltage or you can say the terminal voltage of the incoming machine should be same as that of the running machine so that is the terminal voltage of the two machines should be same the terminal voltage should be same and the third thing is these two machines should have the same phase angles their phase angles should be identical and the fourth thing is the speeds of the machine should be such that the frequency the frequency of these two machines should be identical now if the frequencies are not equal there may be a large power transients in the machines so if these four conditions are deviated or uh, not satisfied so deviation from these four conditions will results in two adverse effects so one will be the there will be the high surge in power and current so you will be witnessing the high power surges and current surges and the second adverse effect is this results in the formation of electromechanical oscillation this results in the formation of electromechanical oscillation of the rotor which may damage the equipment so basically before synchronizing the two alternators 
we have to check all the four conditions to be satisfied and then only the synchronizing switch is closed. So let us see the general procedure for synchronizing of two alternators. So here you can see uh, this is my generator 1 which is carrying the load. So this is my load and that means basically this generator 1 is your running machine and uh, this generator 2 synchronous generator 2 is your incoming machine which is to be parallel with the generator 1 which is where the generator 1 is carrying the load. Now instead of the generator incoming generator it can be a uh, infinite bus bus system. So you can parallel uh, you can do the parallel operation of two alternators or you can do the parallel operation of one alternator with the infinite bus bus system. So with infinite bus bus system and one alternator you can also do the parallel operation. So here if I remove this generator so basically this is your grid uh, or you can say the bus bus system where you can uh, have the parallel operation of this generator with the bus bus system. So basically let us see the procedure for the parallel operation of the two alternators or an alternator with a infinite bus bus system. So the procedure is to be followed. So first thing we have to check or we have to verify the terminal voltages of the incoming machine and the running machine should be same. So if they are not same what we have to do is so we can adjust the terminal voltage of the incoming machine by changing the field current. So by changing the field current of the incoming machine I can have my terminal voltage made equal to the terminal voltage of the running machine using voltmeters. So basically using voltmeters I can check the terminal voltages of the incoming machine as well as the running machine. So by changing the field current of the incoming machine I can adjust the terminal voltage which is to be made equal to the terminal voltage of the running machine. And the second method is so the second thing we have to check and verify is the phase sequence. So the phase sequence of the incoming terminal uh, incoming machine voltage should be equal to the running machine phase sequence of the running machine voltage. So basically there are two methods to check this phase sequence. So the first one you can say is by using the synchroscope, synchronoscope, synchroscope and the second one is the three lamp method, three lamp method. So basically your synchroscope is an instrument or a device which shows the current instant of closing the synchronizing switches. So basically if I say this is these are my switches S1. So these are the synchronizing switches and when all the four conditions are satisfied then only we have to close this synchronizing switch otherwise we should never close the synchronizing switch as we have seen the adverse effects of being deviating from these four conditions. So basically the synchroscope is a device or instrument which shows the correct instant of closing the synchronizing switch. Basically you know, the appearance of this so uh, generally this is a dial and which is having an indicator and uh, basically it is having here one winding and this side the other winding and uh, if I say this is my line so one is having like this and uh, the other is connected here and uh, basically if I say I am having a generator here this is my generator so here uh, one is connected like this with this so basically this is going to be your synchroscope and if the incoming machine is running slower then the indicator on the dial will rotate anti-clockwise. Once again I am repeating if the incoming machine is moving slower then it will rotate the indicator will rotate anti-clockwise and if the incoming machine is faster then it will rotate clockwise and uh, the synchronizing switch is closed when 
the indicator is straight upwards so when this becomes straight upwards vertically straight upwards then only you have to close the synchronizing switch which shows that the two frequencies are matched so basically this synchronous synchroscope is used to give the phase difference so it is used to give the phase difference as well as the frequency difference of the two voltages so it is basically going to give the difference between the difference between the phase and the frequency of the two voltages now coming to the three lamp method so basically here i can arrange a lamp so this is my lamp so these are the three lamps which are connected to the terminals of the switch so let me say this is switch s1 so these are the three lamps or three bulbs connected to the terminals of the switch s1 now the bulbs will grow brighter so the bulbs will grow brighter so let me say here the bulbs will grow brighter if the phase difference is large if the phase difference is large the bulbs will go grow uh, glow brighter and if the phase difference is small the bulbs will go dimming so there will be dimming if the phase difference is small the pd is small and now the bulbs will altogether glow bright and dim so altogether bright and dim when the phase sequence is same so when the phase sequence is same the lamps or the bulbs will glow all together bright and dim and the fourth th thing is the bulbs will glow brighter in progression so it will glow brighter in progression when the phase sequence is opposite so when the phase sequence is opposite the bulbs will glow brighter in progression and this can be made equal by swapping the connections on any two phases on one of the generators so on one of the generators you can swap any two phases such that the phase sequence can be made equal when the bulbs will glow brighter in progression so this is basically how you check and verify the phase sequence by using the three lamp method now the third thing is we have to check and verify the frequency of the incoming uh, machine and the running machine so the, they should be nearly equal and uh, they can be inspected by they can be inspected by checking the frequency of the dimming and brightening of these lamps so by checking the dimming and frequency of dimming and brightening of these lamps you can uh, know the frequency of the two machines whether they are equal that means whether they are nearly equal or not now when that is the frequencies the third thing is we have to check the frequencies now if the frequency are not equal there will be large power transients in the system and the fourth thing is when the frequencies are equal the voltage will alter the phase gradually so when the frequencies are nearly equal the voltage of the machine will alter the phase gradually and the synchronizing switch is closed when and this has to be observed the phase angles has to be observed when the frequencies are nearly equal and the synchronizing switch has to be closed when the phase angles become equal so when the phase angles when the phase angles become equal then only you have to close the synchronizing switch and uh, this can be basically indicated by the synchroscope which shows the phase difference as well as the frequency difference and uh, generally it is used to measure the phase difference but not to check the phase sequence so this is how you connect a incoming generator in parallel with a running generator you can say a alternator with a infinite bus bus system so this is all about the parallel operation of alternators i hope you understood well please subscribe to the channel thank you